Welcome friends. I'm Chris. I'm the Executive Director of Bright Stars of Bethlehem. And as many of you know, our vision at Bright Stars of Bethlehem is that all Palestinians will have life in abundance. And our mission is to raise awareness and, awareness and support for Dar al Kalama University, the first and only university of arts and culture in all of Palestine. So again, as many of you know, hope is what we do is our slogan at Bright Stars. And today we've got an amazing webinar for you. I'm so excited. We're gonna actually discuss about how, um, how to empower the Palestinian community through culture and how it connects to helping to empower the next generation of creative leaders in Palestine. So we are joined today, we've got some amazing guests today. We are joined today by the famous Palestinian artist, philanthropist, and dear friend of ours, Samia Halaby. I had a chance to meet her in New York in her studio. Oh my gosh, um, it, this is gonna be an amazing uh, treat for everybody. She's, she's a force to be reckoned with, um, absolutely. So we also are gonna be joined by Fatin Nastas Mitwasi, who is DAK's uh, esteemed Dean of the College of Arts, uh, the College of Fine Arts. And many of us have met her before, or at least seen her on a webinar. She's also an artist in her, her own right. And she will be interviewing three graduates in the context of talking to um, Samia and uh, talking about Samia's foundation, which is called the Samia Halaby Foundation, which has recently, fund, over the last couple of years, has funded some amazing uh, village projects that we'll be sharing. During our time together today, please post your questions uh, throughout the, the webinar, and they'll be answered at the end because we're uh, um, going to have a Q&A time at the end, as we always do. Uh, all right, so let's get started. It is my absolute honor, as always, to introduce our first panelist. He is the co-founder of Bright Stars of Bethlehem, the founder of DAK University, the recipient of many esteemed international peace and justice awards, the author and contributor to over 40 books. I think it's 44 at this point. Uh, Lutheran Pasker, the most widely published Palestinian theologian, my colleague and friend, uh, literal world changer, Reverend Dr. Mitri Raheb. Welcome, Mitri. Um, hi, Chris, and uh, good morning, uh, good evening, everyone. It's uh, a great uh, pleasure and honor uh, to be with you all uh, today. Uh, we are up for a very exciting uh, time uh, and uh, a webinar. Thanks, Mitri. Uh, I'm hoping you can do a little update too. On uh, you've got we've got a couple of new master's degrees now that we're a full-fledged university um you have two master's degrees that you'd like to share with us and we'd love to hear about that uh, Good to see yes. you. uh actually there are uh, several very exciting news i would like to share with you uh first of all uh maybe most of you already know that last year we got uh, the accreditation as a full-fledged university uh a specialized university it's the first and only university in Palestine with a focus on arts and culture. Uh, right now we have uh, over 22 programs that we are offering. And this year uh, we added actually four new programs. We added uh, a program in community dance, uh, another bachelor in architecture, it's the first architectural degree in the uh, larger Bethlehem area, uh, in addition to two new master degrees, because becoming university, now we have also a graduate school, um, and the two new programs, one is in visual and performing art, where students can choose between focusing and specializing in music, uh, uh, film uh, 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 or uh, uh, painting. Uh, and uh, uh, the second uh, master actually is in uh, management of uh, cultural institutions. There are many, uh, I think over 700 cultural institutions in Palestine. And uh, we did the study and we found out that many of them are lacking actually um, visionary leaders. And so we saw actually our mission is to train the future leaders 
uh, in the art scene who are going not only to create art, but to manage the art galleries, the museums, the, uh, agri uh, the archeological uh, uh, sites, uh, uh, but also uh, to manage uh, larger events and uh, uh, festivals of all kinds. Uh, this is exciting moment actually uh, in our history. And uh, the new semester is starting actually this coming Monday. Uh, it's exciting. Uh, this last few weeks, uh, we have been busy interviewing new staff. I think uh, we have interviewed over 100 uh, new people, uh, amazing artists, the uh, art historian, uh, um, amazing people. Uh, and uh, we chose uh, uh, um, a good number of them. And uh, so I can't wait actually for next uh, Monday uh, for the new semester to start with new student, new energy, but also to see this uh, cultural hub and uh, the, the main address for art and uh, culture in Palestine in full uh, swing. Uh, please keep us in your prayers and uh, look up uh, at our uh, website uh, to see new pictures. In fact, just today um, we loaded uh, the pictures of uh, the graduation that took place uh, two weeks ago. So uh, tune in and have a look there. Now, uh, it's my honor and a pleasure, and I think we are all for a very special treat. Uh, to meet uh, a very special friend, an amazing artist, um, a bold advocate for Palestine, uh, Samia Halabi. Um, Samia, uh, actually, I think many of you have heard of Samia uh, with an amazing uh, journey, amazing uh, career. Uh, uh, she taught at so many uh, of the art schools and universities in the States, uh, including University of Michigan as one example. Uh, and she was actually the first woman uh, to have the title of associate professor uh, at Yale uh, School of Art. Amazing. Uh, um, and uh, an amazing artist with over 3,000 um, art pieces, uh, digital as well as in all different uh, forms. An author, uh, um, uh, art historian, uh, uh, but most probably uh, really a dear friend to Darul Kalima and uh, to us. Samia, what a pleasure uh, to have you uh, today with us in this webinar. Welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you, Mitri. <laughs> uh, Samia, I think uh, people would like to hear uh, something. Maybe let's start with your childhood, uh, uh, your journey as a Palestinian, uh, 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 sharing actually uh, with many Palestinians, the Nakba, but also uh, uh, other uh, uh, challenges. Uh, maybe, maybe let's start there. Um. Mitri, I was born in 1936 in Jerusalem. Uh, and from there, my father moved his family to Yaffa uh, because Yaffa was a great Palestinian port city known throughout the world. And uh, we lived at first, I woke up to my childhood in the previous picture you saw, which was very much international style architecture influenced by what is happening not so much yet in international style architecture in Europe, but influences from uh, the then uh, strong Soviet uh, 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 leadership and also the art of uh, 
Marievich, which I grew up to admire greatly. As my father succeeded and he moved us to various, to another home which he owned, and you'll see it in the next picture. And uh, this home I did visit when I went back to Yaffa, and it's been turned, it looks like a little slummy compared to when we lived in it, uh, but it's occupied, of course. And next picture, you'll see a the house he finally moved us in. And there's a quick little story that tells something of the life then. Uh, I remember going to sleep in the apartment in the previous house and waking up the next morning in this house. What happened, someone leaked news to my father that the British were about to confiscate this building that he'd been remodeling. And so uh, a quick uh, uh, accomplished fact of moving us into the house on the second floor is what we occupied and the home from which uh, we left uh, during the Nakbe in 1948. This home, my brother sent me a picture, uh, is now, uh, of course, completely confiscated. And the next picture you're going to see that it had been it, it and the next door lot uh, had been um, uh, at least or sold or whatever to uh, developers here in the US. And you can see our house now with that little roof, uh, uh, orange, uh, reddish roof over it. I remember visiting before all of these new huge buildings were applied to the corner. We we're very near the port at that point, And this is important location. Across the street was the school I went to. Anyway. These are our stolen homes, and I think this tells you tons about the Nakbe and, and what we lose and about the thievery of those who came and occupied with the help of the U.S. money, with U.S. money, tons of it, and of course the British government. But I do want to make one very important point about 1948. The struggle, the war of 1948 was an uneven war to say the least. We were fighting the British Empire, on which some, it is said the sun never set because they had land from India all the way around the globe and back to China. Uh, and also uh, the funding, the very generous funding to the Israelis of an army of the Isla Israeli gangs into a military and it was hard to fight. But what was important to point is the heroism of villagers who struggled very beautifully. I mean, I will always remember the villagers as part of our culture, their significance, their importance, and the beauty of their struggle of that time. We, we lost and the, we were occupied against huge odds, but the heroism of resistance was not to be matched anywhere. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Samia. Um, uh, I mean, uh, knowing this background, um, Let's look at your journey as an artist. I mean, from, from a displaced person uh, uh, whose family has lost everything in 48, um, uh, basically becoming refugees in, in Lebanon, um, to becoming the first uh, woman um, uh, to be known as and to have the title of uh, associate professor at Yale School of Art, and then uh, to live in New York, uh, exhibiting at Guggenheim, you name it. Um, I think this is a story of resilience, uh, Palestinian resilience, but I think this is your story, Samia. I mean, you are a fighter uh, in the real sense of the word. And uh, can you tell us maybe a few words about your journey as an artist? And especially, I mean, you are really the pioneer of abstract painting. Well, I want to say that uh, when we left Palestine to go to uh, Lebanon, my father took us to Lebanon, returned to join the struggle, then escaped with some people from the Galilee. Um, uh, my father grew up very poor and he struggled selling uh, uh, stuff uh, as a child in the streets of Jerusalem. Uh, and he built his life, he built his business and all he owned was in uh, the hard work uh, that he did and, and his intelligence and his 
uh, venturesomeness. Uh, when he took us to Beirut, I don't want people to think I was a, a, a we were penniless refugees. My father had had the foresight to, uh, well, in a business way, he had expanded his business to Beirut and Jordan. So when we left Palestine, we left by air. He took us by air. Uh, and 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 going to the airport uh, on the way, I could we saw some sites of the uh, Israeli Jews in Tel Aviv celebrating, and on the way out we flew out, and then that's when he returned and then came back, um, escaping very narrowly uh, from the Galilee. Uh, in Beirut uh, it was a very special time. And then we moved to the US in 51 and I studied art because I always wanted to be an artist and um, though I didn't focus on it. Interestingly enough, my mother was the one who pointed out to me, I always loved art, why don't I study it? And I said, but I wanna support myself. So I studied design and then I started painting and you know, it was very a very hard journey. I started as a teacher. I taught for 17 years as a professor in higher education in the USA, beginning at the University of Hawaii and ending at that accursed place we call Yale University, which I am not proud of having been part of. I'm proud that we, I and them uh, separated ways without friendship because they are a university of the uh, ruling class in America, which is part of our uh, tragedies in the Arab world, um, throughout the Arab world, as a matter of fact. I am very proud of the various other accomplishments I've seen happen, and but not necessarily in that success area. Uh, I will be in, in uh, attention is being paid to some of the digital work that I'm doing. But as a painter, you know, I want to quickly say sort of segue into the next uh, subject matter. As a painter, I feel that I have to be a researcher. Uh, I, I feel as a Palestinian, you know, they say I'm a displaced person, but I felt that uh, the whole world belongs to me uh, intellectually. That if I am, if I say to myself, I'm a painter, I've taken on the responsibility of knowing what a picture is, what the history of pictures are. Uh, what did the Chinese do 10,000 years ago? What did happened in India? What it's not only the West that counts in picture making. Um, and we don't need to call it painting, it's pictures. Anything that's a picture is a picture. So I committed myself to understanding the history of pictures and I committed myself to always be known as a Palestinian. Uh, and so I urge people to be the best they can be at anything they choose to, to study and to really study it hard. And you don't necessarily have to study it at a university. Uh, you can study it all the time, anywhere. Um, I'm gonna talk about these images in a minute. Um, so, um, I'm going into the kind of artwork I make, which is divided into three, the research part. And I think the art of the future is abstraction and I have studied very carefully. But I also want to do documentary art because I love Palestine and I wanna use my skills for Palestine. And I did the book and a study of the Kafar Qasim massacre and the stories and details of the massacre are really very moving. This is uh, uh, the story of a young man during the massacre when the Israeli soldiers shot everyone to death around them. They had escaped under the truck that they had been coming home from work in. And he was the only one able to squeeze himself above the tire below the truck. And his friend came after the shooting had subsided. He left and he had run away and escaped. But something about the uh, 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 psychological difficulty of the, the shocking uh, thing of the event made him come back and ask if there's room for him over the wheel. And, and the young man over the wheel said, sorry, there's no room, you know, of course, try and squeeze in, but he couldn't. He said, if you don't mind, I'm gonna sit by the back wheel. He sat by the back wheel and of course the Israelis returned and shot him dead. 
So the next slide, you see the most shocking part of the uh, 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 massacre was the last wave of the killing. And this was bl cold blooded killing, lining up women, children, uh, civilians, tired workers coming home, lining them up and shooting them execution style, going over them with machine guns, automatic weapons, once, twice to make sure they were dead. And this group of women uh, huddled together next. And uh, Emil Habibi, our great scholar, uh, wrote about it and called it the dance of death when they huddled. In the next slide, you will see them huddled together. You'll see the four men, the drivers, and the two boys who were with the women in the back of the truck. And you'll see the women, one of them expecting. And you'll see the little girls, all of them shot dead. I also do uh, 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 documentary drawings of what happens to our olive trees. Uh, Tiffany shows, yeah, this is what I call the refugee olive tree because I found it in uh, near Bethlehem in Beit Jala uh, at the Y, I believe, and it was a tree that was uh, taken as, and uprooted by the Israelis and thrown and uh, it's, uh, and caring people came and took it, planted it to the in the same direction to the sun, uh, you know, uh, trimmed it the way it should be trimmed, and so it's growing again in the fields of. It's a it's now a town tree instead of a, a, a farm tree. So uh, this is my tradition of a refugee olive tree, and in the next one you'll see some more olive trees. This is an ancient, ancient olive tree from Rama in the Galilee. Okay, these are my olive trees. I also do political art, but I didn't think you'd want to see a poster that says Israel makes Auschwitz in Gaza. I didn't. <laughs> or want peace dismantle Israel. These are my political posters, which express my own views. Yeah, thank you. Uh... Samia for taking us uh, into this journey. Um, um, I think uh, we would love to hear about the Samia Halabi Foundation, uh, your desire uh, to give back uh, to Palestine um, and to invest uh, in the next generation uh, of young artists. Um, I think we would love to hear from you about this new foundation um, and, um, you know, your mission of investing in the next generation. Well, um, the foundation came as a result of the fact that I don't have children. And anyway, sometimes you don't want to uh, uh, load children with the responsibilities of, of uh so I thought I have a legacy here, important paintings that are going up in value and what am I gonna do? You know, how am I gonna handle this so that they go into the correct institutions? And I agonized what to do with my paintings and I, do I want them all to go here, there or everywhere. And I decided the same way I decided about everything else international, I want them to go to museums all over the world as long as they're good museums and, and that is the, uh, mission and goal of the of the that's the goal of the foundation to and meanwhile uh, the money and any benefits from that and after th there'll be a lot of work having to do with painting with preserving the paintings with distributing them with creating what we call our catalog raisonné but there will be money also for I wanted it to go to children and mothers in in historic Palestine and uh, then uh, Mitri, uh, this is, uh, uh, I travel in Palestine quite a bit during the 90s and, and first decade of the 21st century. And I had the great pleasure of meeting Fat and Nastas and uh, Metwasi Nastas. And uh, I remember uh, helping the university at its birth uh, when it wasn't yet established. I remember uh, once uh, uh, Fatten asked me to, if I'm traveling, why don't I buy books for the university? So I said, okay, I started in Beirut. I loaded, you know, it was just a pleasure to load down books upon books upon books. And then Damascus, it was great. I found all, and she wanted some books in Arabic, which is not easy. In Damascus, I found them and then more in Jordan. And all of, and I started this taxi ride from 
uh, Damascus when I had enough books. I took the taxi. I hired a taxi to Amman. From Amman, I hired another taxi to the border. From the border, I loaded the, the boxes and hired a taxi to Beit Jala and uh, uh, to Bethlehem. And you know, at that time, there was no entry or uh, exit point. Uh, we used to climb this mountain, this little hill and go to the taxi drivers. I don't know, the, was it DCI or something that we, there was an entry near? And we arrived and I arrived with this taxi driver who knew what I was doing and saw the books and he was so kind. And then this Israeli soldier would not let us, uh, would not let the driver help me with the boxes. So we had this high, you know, rise, uh, a downhill, uphill rise to where the taxis, we, we jump over a little fence that enclosed Bethlehem or be, I forgot where it was, Bejala, near Bejala. 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 Yeah. And we jumped over that and then I could take another taxi. Well, I had loads of books with me. So the driver was so honorable, he wanted to carry the books with me. And as we were arguing with the soldier, the soldier put the machine gun in the driver's belly uh, and was ready to kill him. Uh, and at that point, I was so angry and nervous, but I managed to take the books up. I got into a taxi up there. We, I bargained with him. I was a frenetic mess. And he gave me a price. I said, great, take me to, to, to uh, Sakhtin Dibis, was it? Medbas, yeah. Medbas, Dibis, sorry. And there I, I was having a huge argument with the poor driver. And Fatten came very calmly and figured out what to do and took care of the driver. And we arrived with the books in Bethlehem. That was one of the many meetings I had with Fat. And the first one was in, 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 um, in, in Ramallah, where we were, I think, taking a course together, or, she, or was, I was giving a course and she was taking it. Now she'll remind us. Meanwhile, Mitri, when I was last time in, Bethle in Ramallah, there were some wonderful, wonderful workers from one of the nearby villages who would come to, who were coming to clean the rooms. And they were so kind and, and sweet and they brought, uh, brought us olives and told us stories of how difficult it was to, to arrive as workers. And so I be began to think about wanting to help the villages and uh, in terms of the foundation. So, um, yeah, began to think of the, that project that maybe you want to say something about it before I continue, Mitri. Yeah, I think uh, uh, I remember those days during the second intifada when Israel was just starting to build the wall. Uh, and I remember uh, actually a piece uh, that you wrote and that we published in our news uh, letter at that time. Uh, I think we are, it is exciting to see today three of our students uh, that uh, were supported um, uh, through uh, the Samia Halabi Foundation. Um, and we are going to hear from them. Maybe, uh, maybe uh, some concluding remarks, uh, Samia, before we get Fatin uh, yes. Uh, yes. on the screen. Yes, very quickly, I would like to, uh, to say that uh, uh, I, I, I I want to help the village uh, empower it and make it stronger and 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 make the village feel uh, the honor uh, that we we have for them. Uh, I'm I never planned that this help would be dedicated to art. It should be dedicated to the villagers and the communities and whatever helps and works for them. So I want to 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 say that also another thing that's important is that. Um, uh, it is very, very difficult to come up with projects and very difficult to judge them. And I'm very grateful for Fatin and her committee for being the jury and of selection. But I want to encourage really creativity. I want to encourage the young people to really invent whatever they can think to invent, how to help the village organize, how to move forward, how to do um, this is my artwork that can go while I'm talking. Go ahead, Tiffany, just zoom through it. 
And uh, so this is something very important to me to say that uh, I'm, I and the board are very, very open. In fact, we have board members who are anxious to say, trust the young people, trust their creativity. Uh, and even if a project seems insane or too much or outlandish, uh, making mistakes is not a, a, a something we worry about. You know, making mistakes is part of the creative process. We're, we're intelligent people after all. And, and so I really uh, am our last, our, our in initiating meeting for this project with Fatin was with my sister with us and, and also my grandniece Madison, we met with Fat and, and we discussed matters with her. And this is how this project started. And from our side, all of the board members are just absolutely delighted with what's going on. And we look forward for more. And I know that the young people are going to need trauma advice and and we support that very very much that these young people who are going to the villages returning to their communities or in the case of Munir he didn't return to his community but he chose a community that really badly needed his support and our support and it is very small support but we give it wholeheartedly and with a, a very strong urge that making mistakes are okay, try things out. Uh, you know, this is how we move forward. My thank friend. you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Samia. I think uh, you provide a role model also for many Palestinians in the diaspora that uh, we hope uh, will really get uh, uh, through you, you know, uh, uh, this. Uh, this idea of investing uh, in Palestine, investing uh, in the next generation, uh, uh, and really bringing hope uh, and resilience to our people. Uh, I'm glad that Fatin has joined us now, um, my colleague. Uh, I still remember uh, Fatin back in 1998. Uh, uh, she uh, wasn't yet, uh, she hasn't yet graduated with her BA in art uh, and um, I met her and we were just uh, thinking of uh, uh, starting a, an art program to empower women at that time. Uh, and uh, after meeting Fatin, uh, I thought she is uh, the woman for the mission. Uh, and she has been stuck with us now uh, for uh, since 98. So basically she is one of the co-founder uh, really of the whole art program and, um, and that vision that became a, a university. Uh, um, she uh, finished her master's and actually uh, we, uh, it was published. You can get it on Amazon. It's called uh, Reflections on Palestinian Art. Uh, I'm not sure you can see it here, uh, but it is available on Amazon. And now she's preparing actually for her PhD. Um, and Fatin is uh, supervising this uh, project uh, that uh, the Samia Halabi Foundation uh, is supporting. Uh, Fatin, uh, welcome. Now she's the Dean uh, of the College uh, for Visual and Performing Art. So welcome Fatin. Thank you very much. I'm really honored to be among you all uh, and remember those beautiful old days. <laughs> uh, I also remember your uh, solo exhibition at the Cave Gallery, Samia, which was very beautiful. We, as you. you said, we had lots of uh, good uh, exchange programs together. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you to mention some of them. And actually the uh, project, which we call Embrace Your Community, Empower the Palestinian Village. Uh, we spoke about it back in spring 2019. Uh, and since then, uh, the Sami Halabi Foundation has been giving grants for uh, three consecutive years. In the first year, we supported three graduates, then two graduates. And this year we are now uh, finishing three projects with Hanadi Azmi, Balqis Uthman, and Munir Mtour. 
Uh, I will not uh, speak a lot about ourselves and the projects because I want to introduce the graduates, the young uh, graduates who uh, uh, took the grants of Sami Halabi Foundation because we want to hear from them what did they do and how they uh, worked in their communities. So I will start with Hanadi Azmi. Hanadi was born in Jerusalem in 1991. She loved painting since her childhood and directly after finishing school, she joined the contemporary art program at Dar el Kalima University. She excelled in her studies and participated in various extracurriculum activities and exhibitions and she graduated in 2013. After her graduation, she started teaching art to children at schools in Jerusalem. And in 2019, she became a full-time art teacher at Asala Elementary School of Girls in Jerusalem. Actually, in a village, uh, in one of the villages around Jerusalem. During the COVID-19 pandemic, she realized the importance of developing tools through which she can continue teaching art to her students, even during lockdowns when, when children were obliged to stay at home with very little resources. And this is how she developed her online art curriculum initiative, which she will tell us more about in a few seconds. Hanadi is also a practicing artist and calligrapher she is an active member in the Jerusalem Artist Club. In her work, she focuses on Jerusalem, especially the social issues that the Palestinian people face in Jerusalem. In addition to her full-time job and artistic activity, Hanadi is also married and having four children. So in Arabic, we always say, يعطيك العافية Hanadi, for all the great work. And please tell us more about your project. Okay, thank you, Fatan. I'm happy. I'm happy to be here with all of you. My project is called My Little Museum. It's an art curriculum for children. Most of the schools uh, don't have an art curriculum. Even when they, uh, when there is one, it doesn't uh, suit the childhood needs because it's usually rigid and boring. It uh, doesn't contain activities suitable for the young generation. So I thought a lot uh, that there should be a curriculum that is more suitable for the children. Since I am an art teacher myself, I started focusing on the activities that I do with my students and how children are reacting to each activity. Then I collected the successful activities in a book and called it My Little Museum, as you see in the pictures and this is then the COVID-19 uh, pandemic spread all the around the world and forced everyone to be at home so I had to think more about how to make my curriculum accessible for the children while they are locked down at home so I started preparing preparing and producing short videos on YouTube to demonstrate and show the children how they can work at home and practice the curriculum activities. I have also collected the tools and the materials needed for the activities and put them in one box. Uh, thus, I product a compl complicated package for the curriculum with the videos, <clears throat> demonstrations, and all what is what is needed uh, for each activity. This was the first part of my project, which uh, targeted uh, children between the age of nine to 12 years old. During the year in uh, 2020, 2021, I was able to teach and implement the curriculum with children at Atsala Elementary School for Girls. And I printed 500 copies for the curriculum with the boxes. Then I thought about the second stage for the academic year 2021-2022 uh, to make second curriculum for the younger children between the age of from uh, 
six to nine years old. Then uh, this curriculum focuses on the basic skills, such as cutting paper, producing basic uh, geometric shapes, using bins and mixing color, colors, etc. Again, in addition to the book, My Little Museum 2, I added all the need all needed tools and materials in a box. And I have produced demonstrational videos and uploaded them on the YouTube channel. This year, the project also included joint workshops for the child and his mother with awareness raising, raising discussions and practical activities as well. I have successfully implemented the curriculum with more than 90 children. I have rented 100 copies for, uh, of the curriculum and produced more than 100 videos. I use uh, the curriculum at the school where I teach and it is available for sale in some stationary stores as well as uh, online through majarcom.com and the Facebook page of the project. Uh, this was uh, my project, I hope you like it. And this is the second part, which I finally received today. Ah, this is the package. I mean, yes. The package. Congratulations, congratulations. Yes, so Hanadi <laughs> is finishing uh, her project by this month. Uh, she printed actually 1000 copies for this year uh, and because the, the first copies of the first edition, My Little Museum One was very successful. So congratulations, Hanadi, and thank you very much. Uh, now I would like to introduce Munir Mtour. Uh, Munir was born in 1980 at Sa'ir village, which is the Southeast of Bethlehem, to a big family actually with uh, 12 children. He grew up in Sa'ir where he finished elementary school, but then he moved to a high school in Hebron. Unfortunately, when he was 19 years old, he was detained by the Israeli forces and kept in prison for seven years. Munir spent his time in prison uh, drawing on paper that was taken from sugar and rice sacks. And he used to write a lot of contemplations. After being released from prison, Munir was trying hard to go back to normal life and to reintegrate with his society. He felt that the people around him have changed. And then he decided to study art at Dar al Kalima University in Bethlehem. During his studies, Munir was very friendly and actually made friends with almost all students from the various programs. Uh, and as an artist, he was very much interested in issues related to the concept of memory, time, and place, and how these concepts are affecting the formation and consciousness of the human identity. In his work, he uses lots of symbols from the Palestinian villages, because he himself is from a village, of course. So he uses symbols that he can recall from tombstones, ruins, arches of old houses, and the fields. Munir is a storyteller story and a poet. His first book titled The Wind Dances My Wound was published in 2011. And his second book is now being prepared for publication. And it was actually part of his graduation project for the bachelor degree in contemporary art just this summer. 2022. During the last year of his studies, Munir developed the idea of working with children at a different village of his own, a village that is called Jub Addi. He discussed the ideas with his colleagues at Dar al Kalima University, and he was able to recruit a team of uh, friends and other students who helped him in the project. And please, Munir, tell us more about your project. Tamam, thank you, Ms. Fatim. It's a problem in the camera. Lazem, you can take it on her. Yeah, but I'm going to take it on her. I don't know. 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 
طيب تقدر تبلش تحكي وانا هلا بطلب منهم يشوفوا الكاميرا تمام تمام Hello everyone, I'm happy to be with you and to tell you about my project Comican. The title is a mix between the English word comics and the Arabic word Makan, meaning place. Comican was developed as an art project for children in faraway village of Jubbedib. More than 35 children from different ages participated in the project. We taught the children the basics of drawing, the theory of color and how they can tell their stories and express their feelings and dreams uh, through painting and the comics. These children live under very difficult uh, condition. The village is very isolated and far away with the now public transportation. The children really live the village. The fathers are min minorly working outside the village. So, th so they live the children with the mothers in the village while they, li the, while they live near the working place and they go back home after several days and sometime even after weeks. The village is, the village is uh, surrounded by Israeli set settlement and uh, is not uh, and is uh, not a safe place for playing autodor of sitting out in the evening. There is only one elementary school for boys uh, and girls together. When they finish elementary school, they can go to high school in the nearest in the nearest twin town which is uh, almost uh, 30, 30 minutes of weekend until they reach the mine, the mine road and then they talk public transportation. My colleagues from Dar al Kalima University helped me in developing and implementing the project especially Ramah Jazi. The local partner is a lady who owns a house that dedicates for public activities, minorly focusing on, on women. The house is also used as a base for doctor who visit the village once every 10 days. We have also arranged uh, a one day trip for the children to Dar al Kalima University. It was, it was a fun day that ended with a clown show. We think that uh, the, work, the workshop were very, were very important for the children to help uh, them express their fears and dreams. It was also important for uh, us to know more about the faraway village. That's, uh, we, that's why we have uh, developed uh, a Facebook about the project. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Munir. Uh, sorry for a technical reason, we couldn't see you, but uh, we are happy that at least we can see the photos of the children. And this last photo is uh, of, of the trip when you brought them with Rama uh, at Dar al Kalima. So thank you very much for your work. And now uh, I would like to introduce uh, the last graduate, uh, Balqis Uthman.
who is also from Jerusalem, actually from Beit Safafa village, uh, which is between Bethlehem and uh, Jerusalem. Uh, she also studied art at Dar el Kalima and she graduated in 2018. Uh, Balqis is a multidisciplinary contemporary artist. I see one of her paintings uh, in her back. <laughs> uh, she uses different mediums, uh, painting, but also ink drawing, photography, video and installation art to express a variety of concepts. Her themes center around social issues, particularly the status of women and the rights of Palestinians under the Israeli occupation, with special emphasis on the restrictions imposed on the freedom of movement, especially in and to Jerusalem. She exhibited locally and internationally, and one of her artworks is exhibited at the Imagio Mundi project, which is part of the Luciano Benetton art collection. She uh, worked as an art instructor in, com uh, in community-based institutions in Jerusalem for two and a half years. And currently she is a Bara'im program instructor at Beit Safafa Administrative Council, which is supported by the Jerusalem municipality. Please, Balqis, describe your project. Hello, everyone. I'm happy to be with you and to tell you about my project. Uh, but first of all, I would like to thank uh, Samuel Halabi and Dar al Kalima University for this opportunity and for their support. Thank you. Uh, my project is called Wheel of Freedom. The project is established for women from Jerusalem city and its uh, suburbs from the age 18 and over. It starts in March 2021 and is still successfully continuing. In this project, I teach women how to ride a bicycle in addition to going on cycling tours. In this project, women feel self-confidence, building social relationships, and making new friends, strengthening the bond between, uh, between participants and air, strengthening the body and improving physical skills and mental health learning new skills such as crafts and arts, and practicing other types of sports such as yoga. Perhaps in other countries, cycling is a familiar behavior and a familiar sport. But in the Arab world, especially here in occupied Palestine, it is not very common for women, for societal reasons, traditions, and in inherited wrong ideas. Imagine yourself riding bicycle and the air touching your body or hair. Inhaling some fresh air, training your body without harming the environment and without having to use gasoline or diesel. Enjoying watching the landscape, sky, air, trees, water, wild animals from distance. Getting to know the new roads, places and landmarks in our country. Dare to visit places near or far that you have not visited before because of public transportation or driving a car. By riding a bike, you will dare to go deeper, communicate more, enjoy, explore, and strengthen your connection with the air. The project was supported by Samia Harabi Grant for two consecutive years. During the grants of 2020 and 2021, I have trained approximately 50 15 uh, women between the age of 18 and 65 years. And during the 2021 and 2022 cycle, the project grew more and I was able to train 19 new ladies. The project was, uh, the project has two sides. Teaching the ride, teaching to ride a bicycle. Where I teach women to ride a bicycle, some women have not ridden a bicycle even once in their life. Have driven, driving it several times a long time ago and forgot how to drive or some of them had an accident in their childhood which made them need to ride a bicycle once again that's why they come to me to break this fear tours also the tours are limited to approximately the same years about 90 participants participated in the in the tours with me 
Tours are held in the areas of Jerusalem and its suburbs and some areas of the West Bank close to Jerusalem city. I aspire to expand the scope of the Jerusalem on the, the project in the country and abroad, abroad as well. Thank you very much, Balqis. Very beautiful photos of the tours. Thank you. And we hope you continue further for the coming years as well. Thank you, Fats. And those projects are wonderful. I, you and I had a chance to sit on the Zoom call with the, um, with the foundation folks, including Samia several weeks ago. And that's what prompted us to, to say, you know, I think our audience, our donors, our friends would like to see these inspiring projects. So thank you for sharing that, Fatin. And thanks for the amazing work that you do with the students. Um, it's exciting to start a new school year and to know that, um, that the, the arts, uh, the fine arts program is growing and flourishing and you're a big part of that. So thank you for everything that you do. Um, I am, sorry. So thank you. It's a really pleasure uh, being with you and with everyone. Thanks, Fatin. Okay, so I'm excited to say, I mean, this is so inspirational. I think everybody watching is inspired by um, not only Samia, Fatin, the students, um, as well as Mitri. But I want to bring everybody back to the, this, the uh, um, realization and the acknowledgement that Bright Stars of Bethlehem, our sole purpose is to raise money and to fuel these incredible projects, which really do empower uh, these young people to make a difference in the world and, and they're part of the world throughout the world. So um, I kind of want to bring it back to Bright Stars now in terms of uh, talking to you and sharing with you about some uh, partnership opportunities coming up, some exciting things. So on October 1st, I'd like you to mark your calendars, October 1st uh, on Saturday, 7 p.m. Central, we will be doing another uh, gala, another virtual gala. But the cool thing this year is that we're becoming more and more not virtual. We're becoming, we're able to get together a little bit more. So this year, Mitri and I will actually be gathering with our friends at Pinnacle um, Presbyterian Church in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona. So we will be live there at a watch party. And we also have, I think now, I think we're up to like 18 watch parties across the country. Uh, where other folks around the country will be gathering to raise specifically for the purpose to watch the, the gala, which will have amazing uh, video footage of Mitri at the university. We'll have some compelling um, uh, celebrity shout outs. We'll have videos of, of student highlights. Um, but all of this is not to put on a production or a show. All of this is to raise money to um, you know, to fuel these, these important projects that are going on at the university. So uh, we invite you to partner with us by doing a number of different things. One is we'd love for you all to register for the gala. And now, as you saw on um, Hanadi's uh, curriculum project, she's using the QR codes, which is the, the new and latest fun, great thing to do. It's very convenient. And I am going, and I'm not the technic, I'm not really techno savvy, but I do know how to do this. So I just want to show you, you see the QR codes on here and you, um, what all you have to do is open your camera on your phone if you want to register or if you want to donate and uh, open your phone and then just click on, um, you click on the, the QR code right there on the screen and a link will appear and then you click the link and you either register or donate. So it's really easy. Um, all right, so please, we, we really are hoping to get many, many people across the country registered for the gala, um, but we also have something really exciting, and I'd like to bring Samia back on. This is about the gala. Uh, this year, we're doing a, a little bit more robust, um, uh, we're, we're doing a more robust raffle that has more prizes, and one of the special prizes that I'm so excited to say that we have to offer in the raffle which the, all the raffle prizes are, and Tiffany, can you put up the raffle prizes? Samia, thank you for joining us. I, I just wanna to say too, thank you to the, the Samia Hallaby Foundation for supporting those wonderful projects. Um, it's just exciting every time we hear about it and to hear from the actual students was pretty cool uh, to hear them talk about their projects. Okay, we've got the, the 
photo up here of all the different raffle prizes that we'll be featuring. I want you to look in the middle, that beautiful, um, uh, it's a silk screen that is called Pulsation. And um, this is a, um, a donation from Samia Halby herself. And it's a limited edition silk screen um, print. And Samia, can thank you for this. This is gonna be, I think one of the uh, raffle prizes that many people are gonna wanna, wanna um, buy a raffle ticket for. So can you, can you uh, share with us a little bit about the painting? Uh, of course, I'd be delighted to, Chris, but I'm going to steal the moment to take opportunity to say how much I appreciate and admired Hanadi and Balkis and Munir and thank them for their reports and the wonderful projects. Uh, it is so beautiful and satisfying to see, and I will be sharing this with the board. So forgive me for taking this. No, that's fine. We're all excited about this. And thank you for your support. Yeah. The print is a silk screen handmade. I believe it has seven colors, which means that each one of the members of the edition were passed by hand under the silk screen and squeegeed by hand by a printer at a, at a workshop called Shirocco in Connecticut. And, and it is a limited edition, uh, which means that they are numbered uh, by hand and signed, uh, and, and the number is at the base. So um, please be generous in your bidding. Or, no, it's not bidding, it's raffling. So that, <laughs> thank you, Sammy. Yeah, I think we're going to have a lot of folks that I already know many that want to have a chance to, to win this beautiful, beautiful silk screen. Yeah, thank good you luck for that. And thank you. Bye. Thank you. And Samia, no, don't go away yet because I'm going to steal the moment to tell a funny, fun story. So I had the chance to uh, meet with Samia and Mitri at her studio in New York. And I had such a wonderful time. That was last spring. And then months later, I went to this to, to the Palestinian Film Festival in Chicago. I was sitting there with one of our board members, Linda Edens, and her husband. And all of a sudden, we're watching one of the Palestinian films. And I'm like, oh my gosh, there's my friend Samia up on the screen. So I didn't... <laughs> I just want to encourage you and say you were a Renaissance woman. Um, you were a fine actress as well. Um, and that was it's just so it's so inspiring to me. You know, I know you're very inspirational to the to all Palestinians everywhere in terms of artists and young people, but also um to me, just as I see your energy and I feel your love for life and your your desire to make a difference in this world. And I just want to encourage you and thank you for all that you yeah. do. So thanks, Samia. Um, I, I, I will, um, I, I, I wanna take this moment as well. We're kind of running over, so we're not gonna do a Q and A, um, but we are, I do wanna say a couple of the other raffle prizes are an incredible vacation home in Chautauqua, New York, um, as well as a painting by our very own um, uh, Ismail Matar, who did the painting above my head here. Um, and we commissioned him to do a painting called, um, uh, recipe for hope, which is the theme for our gala. All of these prizes are um, are on our website now. So the, the raffle just went live. So you can buy as many raffle tickets as you want. And we encourage you to do that. Um, again, the uh, event is October 1st and the raffle will be open until like halfway through the actual uh, virtual gala. So please buy, buy, buy uh, many tickets and buy them often and register uh, when you can. Okay, I wanted to, again, take the, this has been just a wonderful time to, to learn about some of the other projects. Just when I think I know about Daryl Kellum and all the beautiful programs that are happening, we learned something else. And it's just really um, encouraging to see that, you know, the mission there and how it's playing out. And you're a part of that. When you donate, when you pray, and that's what we ask you. We want to thank you, all of you, for watching today um, and ask you to continue to pray uh, for us and for this, these beautiful programs. Um, and please um, uh, know how much you mean to us and how much your, your donations mean and how, as, as, you know, as little as they are, as big as they are, they, they're making a difference. So thank you. Um, want to thank Samia Halaby Foundation again for your support of this important work. Uh, want to thank Mitri for your time today updating us. And of course, Samia, Fatin, Hanadi, Munir, and Belkis. Thank you so much uh, for joining us today. Um, we appreciate you again, and uh, we we want you to take care, and we hope to see you soon at one of the watch parties or on the virtual gala. 
God bless everyone. Take care.